Hello. How's it going? It's green. <laughs> so, I have a tiny but fun obsession with tank tops because I want every day to have sort of its own color, personality, energy. This is not St. Patrick's Day. But uh, I was at the store today and this was like five bucks. And I thought, hey, I don't have a really cool green one right now. I have sort of a neonish, yellowish looking green one, but not in this sort of slightly subdued version. So I went for it. So what are we gonna talk about today? I actually have kind of a topic in mind. And that is goal setting. Or for some people it might just be called change. So what does it take to make a change or achieve a goal? Well, by my perspective, I was thinking about this, and I'll explain later on where some of this came from. First is a qualifiable desire. So what is that? Well, for me, it's as simple as saying, if I believe that I can become a professional writer and make a living as a writer and actor within a year, or by the end of 2017, then that's a qualifiable desire to me, because I believe it's possible. If you don't believe it's possible, then it's not qualifiable to you. So why is the word qualifiable significant? Because if it's something you don't believe is possible, or you do not believe in it, you will never push towards that because you will believe it's a pipe dream. So it becomes nothing more than a desire. It never has any stock in your brain to actually pursue it. The second thing, and this is that's different for everyone. So you may say I can get in the best shape of your life of my life in six months if I don't believe you can or I don't believe I can then it does not set a doesn't establish itself in my mind as being worthwhile to pursue at least under those terms and so I will not pursue it I may think it's too daunting I may think it's too risky, and vice versa. The second thing is associated effort, meaning the amount of effort that you put in related to the amount of qualification you have for the desire that can achieve the goal or the change. So if my desire is to leave I could become a professional writer and actor and make a living at that by the end of 2017. I have to believe that the effort I could put in between now and that deadline, I have the ability to put in that amount of energy to succeed. It's equivalent and I believe it's possible on my part. So I don't believe it's as much as desire and effort alone. I think there, there's aspects of that that require further definition. You know, there are people like Anthony Robbins, who I'm a big fan of, say your need to avoid pain and claim pleasure can make an ability or control your ability to pursue things or not pursue them. So if you feel like rich people are jerks and take advantage of people, and that presents a 
thought in your brain that you don't want to be like that, then you may avoid that for fear of becoming one of those people. Uh, if you associate poverty with pain, then you may want to move away from that and pursue the pleasure of being wealthy financially. So he just has a different perspective on essentially assuming the same thing or achieving the same thing. But where I differ from Anthony Robbins in this process is I believe that while it could be broken down to need, I think it's also a matter of what you dream of. Because we're a species of dreamers. We dream of winning the lottery. We dream of being astronauts, cowboys, whatever we may dream of, ballerinas, whatever. And those are dreams, those are desires. <laughs> so you could call it a qual qualifiable dream if you prefer the word dream over desire. I prefer the word desire because it sounds very rooted. Dreams to me are psychological um, and emotional based. Desires are emotional based but they're also, they have a deep-rooted passion to me over dreams, which I think can be driven by passion but aren't necessarily always, um, can, are not always always as clear to people. So I choose the word desire. You may have a better word. Whatever word you choose is, doesn't change the significance. I just believe it has to be something you believe you can achieve, that you can accomplish. One of my favorite co quotes is, whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, the mind can achieve. And I believe that's very true. So if you're looking at wanting to achieve something or change something in your life, the first thing you have to do is decide what is it you want to do. And qualify it in your mind is something you can do. This does not mean say, I want to have a $14 million house in two months if you know that's unattainable. Some people it may be attainable, others it may not be. If it's not attainable for you, then don't use that as your initial qualifying desire. Choose something smaller that you can build on. Set a, set a goal for two months to find a nicer place to live and know where you want to live in after the term of your lease is up. That's a qualifiable desire. You want to live somewhere else? You go find a nice little, nicer place you want to move to in the next two months or at the end of your current lease and then you pull in the effort to accomplish that goal. This doesn't mean go to a situation where you're like, okay, in two months, the nicer place I want to live in is a $14 million house. If you're paying $900 a month and you want a $14 million house in two months, that's going to require some probably pretty shady behavior extremely shady behavior in run style uh, but if you're saying I want to move out of this $900 a month apartment and move into a $1,200 apartment that's the next step up for me go find a $1,200 apartment that satisfies that first step to advancement and know that it's something that you really want and that you could have, and then put in the effort, what it takes to find a new job, uh, to save your money better, whatever it takes to um, put in that associated effort to achieve it. So, that's a general speaking, and I'm sure you get it. Why did I come to that? You may be asking. Or I may be asking, I'm asking. 
because <clears throat> I really like doing these vlogs. These are fun for me. Right now, they're not a requirement in my brain. They're a pleasure in my brain. So I have the desire to do them and I have the effort required to do it. And it got me to thinking about acting and writing, um, organization in general, the whole thing. <clears throat> and I saw, and I knew a bunch of actors, um, and I'm included among this group, this group. I know a number of actors who put in a lot of effort to achieve. I know who put in, some who put in moderate effort, some who put in little effort. Now the ones who put in little to moderate effort are not necessarily looking at it as a career, or if they are, they're sort of living in a pipe dream because it takes more. It takes serious effort. Have I been putting in the serious effort? No. No, I have not. And I acknowledge that. So what's happening for me is a lot to do with like this video. I'm building up a consistency that builds my level of um, belief in what I can accomplish and helps me to organize my time in order to accomplish those goals. This is what it takes for people who seriously want to achieve in the business. It takes more than just sending out your headshots and your resumes and getting a part in a small film. It takes the effort to make sure your character is distinctive, no matter what anybody else does in the movie. Um, distinctive doesn't mean they have to be crazy and unique, but it means that they have to be defined. Um, they have to be sharp in your mind where they're coming from, because then that can come across. No matter who's acting with you, if their performance is not as strong as yours, yours can stand out by the amount of desire you have to do a good job and the associated effort you put in to achieve that goal. And a lot of actors do, do not do that, myself included in that group. Um, same has been for writing. So, there's things that discourage you. Even with my studio, it's starting to start classes because there's so many people struggling to do classes right now. And just not filling classes depresses me and discourages me. But you have to realize, I have to realize, and anyone else in my situation would have to realize that it's not always as simple starting a studio and people fly because there's so many people trying to teach acting some corrupt some truthful some have no place doing it probably others do that it is not as simple as opening the doors and waiting for the students and the money to roll in it just doesn't come like that same goes for any career or change of any kind. So that requires you to put in the effort to create a desire or to understand what your desire is to qualify into something you believe you can have. Little steps at a time sometimes and then the associated effort it takes to achieve it. And that's what I'm working on now with Eve. So I saw something Part of how this started rolling in my brain tonight was I was noting that certain people who are watching 
my videos, like three or four. It's not a huge denomination, but to me that's fine. Four people that aren't me watching the video are great. And this one young gentleman, um, I believe from the UK, said, you know, made a nice compliment and said, check out my channel, which I did. And uh, one of the first videos on his page was a push-up challenge. And I think he's still working on it on day three. But when his video ended, I did not have an eye. I was not close enough to immediately click on another video or whatever else. So it followed a chain of associated videos and led me to this page called Welcome to Aaron's World, where this uh, young woman is doing the push-up challenge. I came in on day two, as the video was sent to on her page, and she did the most interesting thing while she was doing the push-ups. She, in, she intermingled it, that's the word, intertwined, whatever, or spaced it with little facts about herself. So I checked after I commented on that video and said I thought it was cool. I checked her uh, page and noticed that it's been four days since she posted a video. So the challenge, just so you know, is 22-22. Excuse me. <laughs> 22 push-ups every day for 22 days. And the idea is, should be that every day you challenge someone else to participate. So I saw that and I thought, you know, that is a great challenge for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's good, it's physically um, healthy and motivating for your health. It's, um, it's a great opportunity, the way she did it, where she was telling facts about herself to sort of activate your memory and think about 22 specific or guided comments you're gonna make. So hers were about facts about herself. Well, I wrote out 22 of my earliest childhood memories. And then I said, okay, I have an idea. 22 crushes I've had. And it starts sparking neurons in your brain and points in your brain to where you become creative. You start remembering things. Uh, it tests your memory. And it really has a number of advantages. Also creates consistency. Because like I said, this young lady was at did day three, and she hasn't done a video for four days. I don't know about the first young man. Um, I think his day three was yesterday. So he will hopefully continue today and do another video. If you're watching, good luck, man. I'm in support of you. I believe in you. But it's creating a consistency that really helps your life and allows you to start believing in your ability to accomplish things. They say it takes 30 days to form a pattern, but I'm telling you right now, if you put in the effort, five minutes of effort every day, let's say 15, if you decide to sit down and come up with 22 things you want to share during your video each day. And then you record it. Don't do any major editing. Don't feel like you have to do anything major editing. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's the same thing with this. I don't strive for perfect. That's why I don't go to my way to correct changes when the phone was moving. 
all I do is try to make the audio clearer because of the sound of the machine here. But my point is, 22 days is a great opportunity to work on your memory, to get some physical exercise if you don't normally do it. You don't have to be doing the normal on the balls of your feet. You can do on your knees, style push-ups. But that physical effort is really good for you health-wise. It can start something else for you, which means maybe five minutes or 10 minutes of walking, doing these type of vlogs like I do. There's nothing unique about what I'm doing here. It's just a style. And it's something that everybody can do. It's a way of communicating with your family. Uh, it's a way of remembering things that are happening in the moments of your life. But it creates a consistency. You don't have to share it with the public like I am. You can just have it and show it to people you love. It's like your love letter to them. But you're also doing something for yourself at the same time and creating a consistency and accomplishing goals every day that will build and build and build. This is episode six in season four. If I continue with this, which I have no reason to believe I won't, then what happens is I'm creating a pattern that can help me achieve bigger and bigger steps as I go along. And the same thing goes for you. So if you want to make a change or accomplish a goal, my two criteria are qualifiable desire, something that you really want and that you know you can get, even if it's just in little chunks at a time, and then associated effort. Do you have the effort to take that next step to achieve that goal? And if you can find those two things and combine them, then you can do it. And I believe anybody can do it. You don't have to have perfect sight, perfect anything to do it. It's just a matter of believing you can do it and putting in the effort to do it. Like actors, like people who want to be astronauts, like people who want to be writers, like people who want to be teachers, move to a better house, move out of a rough neighborhood, go to college, whatever. Get a better job, with a 50 cents more an hour pay. These are things that establish steps and patterns in your brain that show you that you have the ability to succeed. And believe in yourself. It's not hard. I'm trying to go all the way to the end here so we can kind of walk down or do our cool down. If you're walking as fast as I was, which I can't really run, it would be impossible to talk. <laughs> um, we're in a, but I'm sweating. You probably tell. And hopefully you are as well and you've got a good pace. And we did it. We finished it. Thanks so much for watching. Please do believe in yourself. You'll probably hear me say this stuff a lot because I really believe in each of us and our ability to do things and overcome stereotypes, uh, pigeonholing of any kind. And all goals are achievable. Sometimes it takes steps. It's not a leap. It's a step at a time. Take care of yourself. Be well.